All right. Everybody has their little out, outline there. And just take a look at the board. There's two things that we want to see tonight as we go into the Word of God, as study the Word of God. The day of the Lord versus the day of Christ. And those are two different things that we have to understand. Uh, the Apostle Paul is the apostles to the church, to the Gentiles. And he talks about the day of Christ, okay, which is the rapture, the catching up of the saints that are alive and those that are in the grave. In the day of the Lord, you'll find that all through the Old Testament. The day of the Lord is in the Old Testament, but it's also in the New Testament, okay? But the day of Christ, God gave Paul a special revelation of the resurrection. It was not revealed in the Old Testament. The rapture was, it wasn't. Now, the resurrection was, but the rapture, because see, the rapture is talking about the resurrection of the dead in Christ, but also we that are alive, that when that happens, they will go up first and simultaneously we'll be caught up with them. So we have to see that picture, okay? Two different teachings, and some people put it all together and say it all is going to happen at the end. Well, there's a difference as you see what we have here tonight. So, let me read this day. The day of the Lord and the day of Christ are used to describe different events and therefore are not identical terms. The day of the Lord refers to God's judgments, tribulation years, and it's, and it's tied to one specific event. The day of Christ, on the other hand, is a specific day when Jesus will reward his children at the rapture. So we will go up and we will be uh, at the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, the judgment seat, the great white throne is for the wicked at the end of the tribulation years. So we got to see there's two different things there. Okay, the, the bodies of those who have died in Christ will be resurrected from the dead and those believers who are alive when he returns will be transformed into a glorious body. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 17, we'll check that out later. According to Dr. C.I. Scottfield, the day of Christ relates wholly to the reward and blessings of the saints at his coming, as day of the Lord is connected with judgment. So keep that in mind. All right, let's look at the day of Christ, the resurrection and the rewarding of his church. Can we put Philippians 1, 6 on the board? Make sure that Missy gets one of these uh, back there, will you? Would you call um, Mrs. James DeMar and encourage her in the Lord tomorrow? Give her a call, okay, and then other people during the week. Susan's gonna call tonight and, 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 and encourage her. She's discouraged, very discouraged. All right, here we go. now. Let's look at the scriptures, and we have to learn to break the Word of God down. Everybody look at the board now. And, and first, who's talking? All right, it's Paul talking under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And I am convinced, that is Paul is saying, and sure of this very thing. What is that, Paul? What is that very thing? That he, God Almighty, who began a good work in you, in us, will continue it until the, notice, the day of Jesus or the day of Christ. Do you see that up there? The day of Jesus Christ? Underline that, day of Jesus Christ. All right, what is that? We've got to say, well, that's at, that must be the second coming of Christ. No, what is that? That is the resurrection. That is the day of Jesus Christ when he will return for the church. So he'll continue that work in us until that day. If it happens tomorrow, boom, we're out of here. All right, now notice, right up to the time of his return. Right up to the time of his return. Now what return is Paul talking about there? Now remember, we use the day of Jesus Christ or the day of Christ for the rapture. So we see that he's talking right up to the time when Christ comes to get his bride and the dead in Christ rise first, and then we that are alive at that time, simultaneously, boom, we go up with the Lord. So that's, 
he will continue working in us up until that time, okay? How many sees it? I don't want to lose you. See, I'm, I've got to build my case for you now. <clears throat> Developing that good work and perfecting and bringing it to full completion in you. Now, so when you read that verse of Scripture, our faith goes into God who begun a good work in us. People say, I need to change. Well, let God do the work in you to change you from glory to glory by his spirit. Okay? See, that's where we've got to uh, put our prayer to. All right? So all of us are Christians in here. God has begun a good work, and he, he's going to continue that work right up to the time that he comes for his bride, which we are. Okay? Now, when you read that, you've got to say, well, no, he's talking about the... Uh, the end of the tribulation. He said, no, there's, there's a totally different thing here. We got to understand as we go into this teaching, we're going to see, see that. But I want you to see all the goodies in that one verse of scripture. God at work in us, you know. Oh, I'm working for the Lord. Well, that's good. We all want to work for the Lord. <clears throat> but praise God, he's working in us. He's working in us. See, he started this. We owe our birth to Christ. That's when he started it. When we were born again, he started that work in us. He caused our inner man to be born again, a brand new creature in Christ. We were, <clears throat> we were dead in our trespasses and sins, and God quickened us and made our inner man alive. <clears throat> and that's when he started the work, and he'll continue that work right up until he comes again. Okay? All right, let's, look, let's take another look at the, the, your sheet of paper. All right, look at Philippians 1.10. Put Philippians 1.10 up there on the board. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, here we go. Look at the board, everybody. So that you may surely learn to sense what is vital and approved and prized, what <coughs> is excellent and of real value, <coughs> Excuse me. recognizing the highest and the best, and distinguishing the moral differences and that you may be untainted and pure and unerring and blameless so that with hearts sincere and certain and unsalted you may approach notice this that you may approach the day of what of Christ that's the rapture not to stumble so we see the work of God is going to continue in us until the day that Christ comes and gets us. And that here we see in that scripture that all that might take place and be approved until the day of Christ. Not, not the day of the Lord now. How many see the difference? But the day of Christ or the day of Jesus Christ. So when you read that in the scriptures, you need to underline that in your Bible and get that straight in your mind. So there's another one there that talks about uh, the day of Christ, which we call the rapture. Now, <clears throat> let me say this. The resurrection is in the Old Testament. Jesus talked about there be a resurrection of the just and the unjust. Well, we that have studied the scriptures understand that, that there is a resurrection at the, end of the, of the trip, uh, at the end of the millennium years, which is called the great white throne judgment. How many, how many remembers that in the Bible? That's for the wicked. But there's another judgment, the judgment uh, that, that will stand at the judgment uh, of Christ, which is found in 2 uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, I believe it is. So put that on the board and let's make sure we get that straight. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10. Here we go. For we must all appear. Now, remember, when we studied the Bible, who's he talking to? Who is God talking to through? He's talking to, to Paul, and Paul is stating this, writing this down. And so <clears throat> there's times when he's talking to the Jews. There's times when he's talking to the Gentiles. There's times when he's talking to the Jews and the Gentiles together. We've all been put together. Jew and Gentile is in the same body. We're all one man. Okay, all that is in the scripture. So now Paul is saying, <coughs> excuse me, for we must all appear and be revealed as we are before the judgment seat of Christ. The judgment seat of Christ. 
Okay? So Christ will have a judgment seat. He'll sit at the judgment seat and he will reward us for our works. So he goes on and tells us, uh, so that each one may receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, in this body right here, down here on the earth, while we were down here, the things, all the things that we do, uh, it will be judged, okay? Considering what his purpose and motives have been. So it's important that our purpose and our motives uh, have been uh, right motives and right purposes, that we're not doing it for our glory or uh, anything else other than to bring glory to God, so that we'll be uh, judged on that, have been, and what he has achieved, been busy with. So what have we been busy with? That's important to see, okay. And given himself and his attention to accomplishing, okay. And how many see that? Okay, now we will be judged. Now, there's something up there you might understand it. I don't know if I fully understand it, but it says uh, that, uh, if I can find it, where's it at? Okay, receive his pay according to what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. So evidently, now we're, now we're up there. We're in heaven, the judgment seat. Now notice this, we got to get up there to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. How many sees that? See, as you study the scriptures, things the revelation will come right out. Well, that, that makes sense. We're going to all stand there. Well, we got to get up there. When are we going to get up there? Rapture. How many see that? Okay. Okay. We're not down here where the tribulation is going on. We're up there being judged by what we've done in these bodies. Notice, good and evil. Now, what in the world is that? Good and evil. You mean we've done some evil things? Well, we, we might not think so, but when you measure it to God's holiness, <laughs> it might be considered evil as far as God's concerned. How many understand that? Okay, so <clears throat> we will be rewarded. That's important to see. And we all like rewards. We all like Christmas time when we open our presents. So hopefully that this will be be good for some folks. Now, some folks are not busy, and they, they don't seem to be doing a whole lot, and when they get up there, they just ain't going to get a whole lot of pay. Quiet in here. Aren't you glad you're busy for the Lord? Huh? Yeah, 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 okay. Very good. I got your attention. I knew I would. <clears throat> anyway, so, <laughs> How I many love me tonight? Uh, yeah, I'm pushing it, I know. <coughs> Sometimes you have to push it. <coughs> Man. All right, look at Philippians 2.16. 2.16. Now remember, the seed of Christ. We've seen that one. Look at this next one now. Philippians 2.16. Everybody, all right, are you ready? Look at the board. Holding out to it an offering to all men the word of life. That's what our job is, holding out to, to it an offering to all men the word of life so that in the day of Christ, there's the day of Christ. Remember we have right here, look, the day of Christ, the day of Christ. What day is that? Now we've got to make sure we understand what day is that. What day is that, Susan? Day of rapture. Okay, rapture. Missy, what day is that? Day of rapture. Day of Christ. What is it? Right. What day is it? I want to hear you come out. I'll get you on. I don't want you to sit there. And, uh, I know how shocking it is. What is my name? You know, what is my name? What's your name anyway, son? How many love me just a little bit? I got all of you woke up now. Hey, yeah, yeah. You thought you was going to sneak through this night sleeping, didn't you? I got you now for sure. All right. Now, let's have a little fun as we move along here and learn. I love to learn. Now, let's read all that again. Holding out to it and offering to all men the word of life. That's why every time I give one of these uh, out, that's the word of life right there. Today, we, must, we had to go to the doctor and ch had to check him over, and he checked out pretty good, by the way. But anyway, we gave him all. The doctor got one of these. Uh, the nurses got one. We had them all laughing and having a big time. And, and the doctor had this picture of this uh, skeleton up there with all these guts in it. You know, they showed all the guts and the inside parts of our body. And, uh, and I asked him, I said, uh, <clears throat> I said, why was the skeleton afraid to cross the road? 
I don't know. I said, see that sign right there? I mean, right there? He didn't have no guts like that. <laughs> he looked at it, he laughed. He thought that was funny. Anyway, so this, this is offering the word of life. Okay, now let's finish that. So that in the day of Christ, in the day of Christ, nail it down. What is that day of Christ? The rapture. Okay, not the day of the Lord. That's the, that's, we'll find out the judgment. That's all in the Old Testament. It's in the book of uh, Revelation. But this, the day of Christ, was only revealed to the Apostle Paul. Even some of the other uh, uh, apostles didn't understand this. You, you hear what I'm saying? Some of the other apostles did not understand this. Even Peter said that the things that Paul teaches, is, sometimes it's hard to understand, especially some of the folks that just don't seem to have it together yet. It's hard to understand what Paul is saying. Peter even struggled with it. But it was revealed to, to Paul by revelation of God. Jesus Christ revealed that and revealed this about the day of Christ to the Apostle Paul, which we call of the resurrection. Someone said, well, I don't believe in the rapture. Well, you don't believe in the resurrection. Because that's what the rapture is. Now, rapture is not in the Bible, but it's an English word that we use to describe the catching up or snatching up the saints of God. It'll be, boom, we out of here. Just that fast. Pluck right up, just like that. When you check out the original Greek on that, it's fast, it's quick, it's, we out of here. Can you imagine being able to sit in a congregation and all of a sudden people disappear and you're still uh, sitting in the chair? Whew. Aren't you glad you know the Lord? Amen. All right. I'm not trying to scare you, but don't hurt to shake the bushes just a little bit, you know, once in a while. All right, now look at that. Now, when we read that, see, there's so much in the Word of God holding out to it and offering to all men the Word of life so that in the day of Christ... I may have something of which uh, ex uh, uh, exalt, exalt, help me, uh, exhaustedly to rejoice in glory in that I did not run my race in vain or spend my labor to no purpose. Now, let's understand what Paul is saying. Here's what he's saying. <clears throat> I'm handing out this. I'm handing this out. Now, notice this. I'm holding out an offering to all men the word of life. Why? Tell me why. So that in the day of Christ, I may have something of which to rejoice and glory in. You got that picture? See, it's important that we understand the scriptures. So that's why we, you know, we, we have, it burns in my heart to, to give the word of God out. But I'm doing it, and I'm going to be rewarded for it. And I'm all out. I'm sorry, folks. But, but see, if I don't give the Word of God out, the Word of life out, then on the day of Christ, will we stand at the judgment seat of Christ? I won't have anything to rejoice and glory in that I didn't. And in other words, you, you run your race in vain and didn't spend your labor, and you spent your labor in, in, in vain. How many sees that? All right. Should I milk it a little bit more? <laughs> Back on the farm, we used to have a lot of fun doing that. When you're milking a cow, how many's ever done that when you're milking a cow? Didn't you do that when your sister come by and you shoot them? <laughs> okay. All right. Scratch that. <clears throat> okay. Now, see, you understand that scripture a little bit better, don't you? How many understand that? You got revelation. See, when you break it down, and that's what I want to do before I stand before the judgment seat of Christ, that I've left something behind for you guys. Okay, look at that. That's a powerful scripture right there. Notice, day of Christ, day of Christ. Boom, we're up there. Then we stand at the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded. And thank God we didn't, we didn't walk in vain. We didn't labor in vain. But we, we held out to men, we offered to all men the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now we do that in many different ways. All of us have different jobs in the house of God and all of that is part of, uh, of us all doing that, okay? So there's many ways to do that. All right, let's go to one more here. Time 
Okay, I've got time. Turn to, uh, for, look at uh, your paper, turn to uh, 1 Corinthians 1.8. 1 Corinthians 1.8. <clears throat> All right, here we go. And he will establish you. Now, who is he? God, the Holy Spirit, will establish you to the, to, to the end. Keep you steadfast, give you strength, and guarantee your vindication. He will be your warrant against all accusations or indictments so that you will be guiltless and irreproachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Messiah. Amen. Now that's powerful. Amen. Now let's make sure we understand what, we, what we're reading there. God has taken the responsibility upon himself as we yield to him. He says, listen, I'll establish you and I'll keep you steadfast and I'll give you strength. And I'll give you a guarantee of your vindication. And he will be your warrant against all accusations of somebody standing up here trying to accuse you of something. God will vindicate you. Indictment so that you will be guiltless and irreproachable in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ of Messiah. That is on the day of the rapture, the day that he comes, okay? So God has placed upon himself that responsibility to work in us and to establish us and to make us steadfast. And even he will be there, uh, you know, he's a lawyer. And somebody to point their finger or the devil constantly is the accuser of the brother. And uh, the Lord will take care of that for you. You don't have to worry about it. That's why if somebody talks about me, I don't have to fight. I don't fight no man. We fight not against flesh and blood. Say what you want about me. I know none of you would do it, but I'm talking about people who have. Whew, I said, God, I pray mercy on them. Do you realize you don't touch God's anointing? See, I believe that. I, I've read the Bible. I've seen people. Boom, they out of here. Open their mouth. And touch the anointing. You don't do that. The Bible's full of that. You read that. How I many know that? Now that puts a little fear of God in you. That'll keep you walk straight. So if you said anything about anybody you shouldn't, you better repent right now while you got a chance. Because that might be the evil that we're talking about, good and evil. Remember standing at the, at the, at the uh, judgment seat of Christ, good and evil, that might be something that you open your mouth and you shouldn't have. In fact, I tell you what, the closer you get to God, you don't say a whole lot. Are you out there? Wave at me if you're out there. Wave at me if you're somewhere else. <laughs> I've seen people in church somewhere else. <laughs> Up here. <laughs> All right. How many love me tonight? Mm -hmm. All right. Look, that's powerful. That's what the Lord's going to do for us. And I thank you, Lord, for that. Yes, Amen. All right. Now we're going to go and we're going to touch. We're going to touch the day of the Lord and see what the Bible says, okay? And listen, I'm only touching just a little of this, so the best I can do tonight. All right. The day of the Lord refers to a time of judgment and actually covers several events. It can refer to the Lord's judgment of nations in the Old Testament, okay? Uh, look at number two, the judgment during the tribulation period. The judgment at the second coming of Christ. The judgment when God destroys the heavens and the earth. The term that day, the great day and the day occurs more than 75 times in the Old Testament. And the idea of judgment is paramount to all of them. So we see that the day of the Lord is a day of judgment. Okay. All right. Let's put Zechariah 1, 14 and 15 up there. Zechariah 1, 14 and 15, up on the board. Are we ready? Zechariah 1, 14 and 15. All right, there's 14. 
Notice, the great day of the Lord. The day of the Lord. Everybody look at the board. They put great day of the Lord. The great day of the Lord. You see that? Old Testament is near. Near and hastening fast. Hark, the voice of the day of the Lord. The mighty man, unable to fight or to flee, will cry then bitterly. 15. That day is a day of wrath, a day of distress. That don't sound like the rapture to me. <laughs> and anguish, a day of ruin and devastation, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness. How many's read about the tribulation years? Well, there you go. See, so that is definitely not the coming of the Lord for the saints of God. So that's very clear. You can't get it mixed up. All right, let's go to the next scripture, Amos 5.18. Amos 5.18. Woe to you who desire the day of the Lord. Why would you want the day of the Lord? It is darkness and not light. So when you, when you read at the end of uh, the tribulation, all during the tribulation years, I'm so glad we're not going to be around because it's a day of darkness and not light. And we're children of light and not children of darkness. And that day will not catch us unaware. We know it's coming down the road, but we know that before that happens, we out of here just like that because we know that we are in the day of Christ. Okay, so the day of Christ and the day of the Lord is totally different. And when you read the scriptures, you find that out. All right, let's go to uh, Isaiah 13, 6. Isaiah uh, 13, 6. Well, for the day of the Lord is at hand as destruction from the almighty and sufficient one, Shaddai, will it come. So we see that the day of the Lord is at hand as destruction from the Almighty. So it's a day of judgment upon the wicked of the earth. And we'll see that as we progress along here. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 30, verse 3. Ezekiel 30. For the day is near, even the day of the Lord. See, the day of the Lord, it ain't the day of Christ. It's the day of the Lord is near a cloudy day. It shall be the time of doom for the nations. Well, we get over in the book of Tribulations and we see that God will judge the nations, every one that comes. All right, everybody awake? All right, here we go. You don't want to miss this because this is very important because there are so many people mixed up about all of this, okay? Very good, all right. All right, here we go. 2 Peter 3.10. Now, this is another event. Here we go. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will vanish, pass away with a thunderous crash, and the material elements of the universe will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and the works that are upon it will be burnt up. So this is another time in the future when uh, after that there'll be a new heaven and a new earth, okay? And so we see that uh, that is also called the day of the Lord, okay? And it, notice it ain't very uh, cheerful, is it? <laughs> All right, we got to see that. Okay, now I want you to, next scripture I want you to turn to is um, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13. And let's talk a little bit about the day of the Lord in the scriptures. And let's see if we can see some differences here. Okay, this is um, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13. Okay, everybody look at the board now. Now, Paul, remember, we, Paul is talking. Now, also, we would not have you ignorant, brethren. Now, any time that Paul says that, he knows there's some ignorance in the group. So he wants to enlighten them. Well, what about, Paul, about those who fall asleep in church? 
gotcha. <laughs> Have you ears about those who fall asleep in death? <clears throat> See, the Christians don't die, they just fall asleep. Okay, that's what the New Testament uh, calls that. That you may not grieve for them. So we don't have to agree, I don't agree. We don't have to grieve for them. Why? Because we know the Bible. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Why should we grieve for them going home to be with their Lord? Why grieve for me when I go? Now, I understand the human element. I understand all of that. But Paul brings it right down the middle of the road and say, you know, you don't have to grieve for those that are falling asleep. You better grieve for those that's left behind that didn't, hadn't fallen asleep because they still got to fight the good fight of faith. <laughs> okay, now see what he says. For them as the rest do. The re Who is the rest? No, the rest is the evil people, the wicked people, the ungodly people who have no hope. You see that? Who have no hope. Okay. Beyond the grave. In other words, the wicked people have no hope beyond the grave. No hope. No, not no hope to be with God. The only thing they're going to have to look forward to is, whew, man, hell itself. So when you read that, Paul is, is, is letting us know that uh, we don't have to grieve. Now, <clears throat> when you read in Thessalonians 4 here, there were some people that was coming and, and, and talking to the Thessalonians and said, well, you know, the Lord's already come and you're all left behind. That's why that was written, okay? Okay, so uh, he's trying to wake them up. So you don't have to grieve, you don't have to... Uh, worry uh, it hasn't happened yet they thought it already has happened and they were left behind okay so when you when you read that and the contents and the rest of all that this is why paul that uh, uh, wrote this down now also we would not have you ignorant brethren about those who fall asleep in death that you may not grieve for them as the rest do who have no hope beyond the grave for since we believe now notice this for since we believe not talking to himself and his associates and the people of that day and us Christians. Since, since we believe that Jesus died, you believe that? Raise your hand at me. All right. And rose again. You believe that? Raise your hand again. All right. You better. We, we just run right out there and lay hands on you right now. Because if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thy shall be lost. Hey, save, aha, you're on the ball. All right, look at it. Even so, now notice, even so, God will also bring with him, through Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death. Yes. Now, we need to understand that. All right, let's look at it. Now, since we believe that Jesus died and he rose again, we all believe that, okay? Do we believe that God will also bring with him, Jesus, those who have fallen asleep in death? Do you believe that? Some of you ain't even moving your head. Hello, are you out there? I don't want to see your heads move. All right, I know you're awake. This is important. This is very important. So, how in the world? Wow. So here we, here's the picture. We see Christ coming down. And this ain't, this ain't the terminology when you read Revelation 19, when he's riding his horse. You, you remember he's riding his horse in Revelation? And we're behind him on our horses. I, I tell Susan that. <laughs> she don't want to ride no horse. I say, well, you can stay in heaven then, honey. <laughs> and clean the bathroom or something. <laughs> I'm going to get on my white horse and I'm going to follow the Lord. All right. <laughs> well, I'm glad we're not uh, riding the elephants. I mean, a white horse is not bad, you know. That's, look pretty sharp. Look pretty sharp on you know. Okay, now. For God to bring them with him, we know that absent from the body, present with the Lord. 
All right, so they got up there when they died physically. Their spirits went up there to be. Now God is going to bring them, that might be us, with Jesus when he comes down. Now what is he coming down for? Okay, we've got, we got to see that now. All right, let's put the, uh, verse 15 up there. <coughs> Here we go. For this we declare to you, Paul is saying, by the Lord's own word. Now see, Paul got this by Jesus himself. Revelation word. Notice, to you by the Lord's own word. Well, Paul, when did you hear that? When did you hear Jesus? Well, he got the revelation. Jesus visited him, okay, at some point. All right, so he got it from the Lord. So we can say, okay, that's sound, that's sound doctrine there. That we who are alive and remain, that's us, until the coming of the Lord shall in no way proceed into his presence or have any advantage at all over those who have previously fallen asleep in him in death. So let's get the picture. So here they are. They're coming, they're, they're, Jesus is coming down. Uh, the spirits that have already died, uh, the people that have already died in their spirits is present with the Lord. Uh, God is bringing them with Jesus and Jesus is coming down here. And then all of a sudden the graves begin to open up and our loved ones, that, uh, that their bodies are in the ground and they will come out of the body in resurrected bodies. And the spirits that have that are coming with Jesus, they'll come and claim their resurrected body and unite their, in their resurrected body and turn around and go back up. And then here we are, and, and then we're changed into a glorified body, and we all go to meet the Lord in the air. That's what Scripture says. You all believe that? Yes. Well, good. I've got believers in here. I like to teach believers. All right, now, let's make sure we understand that. For this we declare to you by the Lord's own word. Paul received it. That we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord. There's the coming of the Lord. There, that, ain't, that ain't the tribulation. That ain't him coming on white horses. But you don't see that over in Revelation 19 at all. He comes down he lands on Mount Olive and it splits. And he does warfare. And he, he, he don't go back up. Are you listening? You read your Bible. You know what I'm talking about. He stays on the earth. And he's going to set up his kingdom. But notice this. He's coming down. He's going to get his bride, his troops, his saints. And they're going to be resurrected out of that grave. And have resurrected bodies. The spirits that come with him are going to unite. Bow. And then we are changed instantly. And the Lord, notice this. Until the coming of the Lord shall in no way precede. So we won't be first. Those that have already died, their bodies will come out first. And second, we're second, but we're all simultaneously, boom, we meet the Lord in the air. Okay, let's, look, let's read, read the next one now. <coughs> Verse 16. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven. Uh, when I read that, I say, thank God he ascended at one time. You remember that? How many remember that? You know? Why well, stand here and look at this same Jesus shall come in like manner? Book of Acts. That's what the angels said. The apostles were like. And, and the angel had to wake them up. Hey, this same Jesus is going to come just like me. He's going to come right now. Okay, and then, and oh wow, that's great. Now look, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven. So we know he ascended and now he's descended from heaven with a loud cry of summons, with the shout of an archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God. And those who have departed this life in Christ, that's our loved one, that's my dad, that's mom, that's some of y'all's loved one. They're going to be caught up first. In Christ will rise first. So there they go. They're coming out of the grave. I declare there's my dad. My goodness, he's got his glorified body. By that time, boom, I got my glorified body. And we all go up to be with the Lord, to be with him forevermore. Wow, man, that's a, Amen. what a gospel we have. Look what it says. Wow. Go to the next verse, 17. Then we, the living ones, 
who remain on the earth. Now, here we are. We're remaining on the earth. They've come out of the grave. They're in their resurrected body. The spirits have met and they're up. Here we are, and we remain on the earth, shall simultaneously be caught up. That's where that word rapture comes from. Actually, snatched up along with the resurrected dead. You got that? All right. In the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so always through the eternities of eternities, we shall be with the Lord. There is nothing in that about destruction or judgment or anything. How many sees the picture? And look at verse 18. Therefore, discourage one another with these words. <laughs> Therefore, comfort and encourage one another with these words. Now, he ain't talking about judgment. Now, now let's move over here just real quick, like, and let's see what we got over here. Now, this is, we're talking about the day of Christ there. That, how many would say that's pretty good? Yeah, yeah, everybody wants some of that, right? Well, that's what God says he's going to do for us. Now, let's look at the day of the Lord and see the comparison, okay? Turn, if you will, to Jude. Now, there's more scriptures we can add, but time elements, so I think you're getting sleepy and tired, and I can see your eyeballs rolling. So it tells me something. <laughs> when, they start, when they start crossing, I really get serious. Uh, that's serious. <laughs> How many love me? I'm, okay. <laughs> All right, look at Jude. Jude chapter 1, verse 14. <laughs> Everybody there. Jude. Here we go. Good old Jude. Jude, Jude, Jude. All right, look at this now. See if you can tell as you can... Uh, Tell that the Cyprus says, Are you ready? Look at the board, everybody. It was of these people, moreover, that Enoch in the seventh generation from Adam prophesied when he said, Behold, the Lord cometh with his migrate of holy ones, 10,000 of his saints. All right. Now, if we're coming back with the Lord, we got to get up there. And how do we get up there? Rapture. Rapture. Got a good student right here. Good student. Another one right there. The rest of you, I'll pray for you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy what? 10,000 of his saints. 10,000 of his saints. That's us, folks. We're coming back with the Lord. All right? Now, now the next question is, why is he coming back? Remember, he came back to get us. He took us up there. Now he's coming back again. And this is over in, in, in Revelation uh, chapter uh, 19. And he's coming back on his white horses. Turn to 15 now. We'll see why he's coming back. The next verse tells us. Are you ready? Here we go. To execute judgment upon all and to convict all the impious, unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed. Now he ain't coming back for, uh, to rapture anybody here. Now we already went through that. Y'all remember what we just talked about? So you gotta compare scriptures now. Keep this straight, because this is very controversial in the body of Christ and people are mixed up with it. And I've studied this thing for 60 years and I still come up with the same thing. What the Bible says. So he's coming back with us, and you have to run over there in Revelation 19 to find out when he's coming down and he's going to land on Mount Olive, and Israel's in a big battle. The nations are surrounding the Jerusalem. It looks like that's the end, but we're not going into that tonight. But that's the picture you need to see, and he's coming back, and he's going to straighten some folks out real quick, like to execute judgment upon all and to convict all the impious unholy ones of all their ungodly deeds which they have committed in such an ungodly way and of all the severe, abusive, jarring things which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. So he's coming back to judge them. 
Now, I want you to run over real quick, and we'll close on this, to, Revelate, to Romans chapter 1. You say, well, these people probably didn't know all about, didn't know all of that. Well, let's see what the scripture says. Let's get to, um, let's look at uh, Romans 1 verse 18, okay? Here we go. All right, look at this. Look at the board. For God's holy wrath and indignations are revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who in their wickedness repress and hinder the truth and make it inoperative. And go to the next verse. For that which is known about God, we say, well, they don't know. No, that ain't what the word of the Lord says. For that which is known about God is evident to them and made plain in their inner consciousness because God himself has shown it to them. but they still choose to do their thing and live their life like they want to. And God's coming back. Christ is coming back to judge that. Remember Jude chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. You just got to keep these scriptures in mind now. Let's read on to the next one. Next verse. For ever since creation of the world, his invisible nature and attributes, that is, his eternal power and divinity, have been made intelligible and clearly discernible in and through the things that have been made his handiwork. So men are without excuse altogether without any defense or justification. Case closed. So he's coming back, and they've all they've messed up God's planet, and he's going to clear all those folks out, and his folks are going to live on his earth. And down the line, he's going to create a new heaven, a new earth, and it gets better and better and better for those that choose to give their life to Christ and thank God that we have. So we don't have to worry about the raft of God. We are saved from the raft of God. I believe that's found in Romans 5, 8. Would you put it on the board and we'll close there. And there's so many other scriptures that we can use. But I think you've had enough tonight. I can tell that. All right, look at that now. <clears throat> For, well, that's good. <laughs> For God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. Which one is on the raft of God? Uh, you remember, is it nine, verse nine, five, nine? Check the next one out and see. I'm talking about, he saved us from the raft of God. He did not. Therefore, since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Everybody just shout on that. Go, go ahead. Man, that's great right there. How much more certain is it that we shall be saved by him from the indignation and wrath of God? God has not appointed us to wrath. But to inherit his salvation. I tell you, I'm so glad that God has done a great thing and there's so much more we can share. How many gets a clearer picture tonight, you think, that different than we got a lot more scripture we can share, which I'll go, I'm going to share down the road. But you got your papers there. Father, I thank you right now, the Lord, as we leave this place tonight, that we will give you the praise and glory to know that you came to die for us. That we would not have to suffer the wrath of God. Why? Because Jesus took the wrath of God on himself for us. The price has been paid. He was our substitute. And we are free now to love him, to love one another and serve one another. And to serve God and walk out of this place knowing that we are children of the most high God. In his name we do pray, Jesus. Amen and amen.